Everybody's talking today because we're all saying hi to each other, huh? We're like, hey, how's it going? I know. You miss, you miss one Sunday and it feels like a month. Yeah. I know, huh? I know. Yeah, I did not want to cancel church, trust me. I do not and will not cancel church. It's just not not me, you know. You know, or if I or if I can have some other team host a Sunday, then we'll get that in place because we don't we don't want anybody and their children to have to miss out on corporate gathering. You know, but stuff happened suddenly and we didn't have a backup plan for it and we just we had to cancel. So Yep, 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 yep. Thank you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I, I, was, I wasn't going to stop, man. I was like, I still want to have church. I'll put a shield up. I'll put a mask on. We'll st-. But I had no strength in my bones, guys. I had nothing in me other than just lay on the ground and worship. And uh, I'm excited to worship with you guys now because I, you know, I know... I know a lot about worship. I know the doctrine of worship. I know how powerful it is in the life of a saint. But I'm telling you, when you're weak and you got nothing, and all you have is worship, all I mean, you, you learn a whole lot more about worship when you're worshiping and you're not getting your breakthrough. And it, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Like when we come together and we get a worship, it's powerful. It's powerful. Like don't, don't be complacent in your worship at all. If you feel complacent at all in your worship, it is the enemy scared and nervous about what he knows can take place in your life when you are not complacent with your worship. I'm serious. I had this experience and I'll share about it um, in my worship where I felt the, the Lord, the presence of the Lord come into the room and it was holy, holy, honorable, warrior-like. And I just said, Lord, I can never be complacent with you again after what I feel today. It was powerful. And today, as we worship, I'm not going to be singing. I'm just, you know, going to give my voice a rest and let it rebuild and stuff. But we, um, we're going to worship to Bethel today. But this, um, I'm putting on this worship set because I had an amazing encounter during this worship set in our living room on Monday when I was freed from COVID. I was delivered from COVID. I knew the moment. I knew the instant. It was eight days of hell. And then on that eighth day, at the end of that eighth day, I don't know why it happened at that time, but during this worship set, I just said, man, I got to get something on the TV. I don't feel like it. I can't even get up. I have nothing in me. I just, I got to look for, I just kept hearing Brian Johnson, just get Brian Johnson. You know, Brian Johnson, I was looking up Brian Johnson and this worship set came on. And as this worship set started, I felt a gift of faith come on me to worship. Sometimes you guys just need to make the decision, regardless of how you feel. Just, I'm showing up, I'm going to sing, I'm going to worship, I'm going to declare who God is. I have none of the feelings. I have none of the ambition. I'm not even hungry for God. I'm weak, you know, whatever. Take all the excuses and bring them before God and say, they're not going to keep me from just disciplining myself to sing to Him. And then the gift comes. Then the anointing comes. Then the breakthrough comes. God says, that's a person I can meet with because they're going to show up no matter what. Regardless of feelings, I can dispatch. I can release my angels. I can move and... As we worship today, I want you guys to be encouraged to not be complacent with the Lord. It doesn't matter that it's on a TV. It does not matter. The worship is in you. It's in you. You carry the presence of God. You are temples of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I made this decision to worship. And I could not, as I began to worship, I could not worship in English. All that would come out of my mouth was tongues and groanings as I had this fever and these aches and these chills just just groanings coming out of my body and tongues and all of a sudden I could feel this gift of faith coming on my body to worship Him in spirit and in truth does it say health or sickness you know I mean it just says spirit and truth whatever that means 
spirit and in truth. And as I, as I began to worship the Lord, I felt this anointing and then I could stand up and then I could kneel and I would just tremble in the presence of the Lord. And then I remember this moment and I could tell the difference. I knew it wasn't Jesus. I knew it wasn't the Father. I knew it wasn't the Holy Spirit, although they all carry the same similar presence. I could tell it was angels. And I felt five angels come in the living room, gather around my chair, and these angels meant business. And this is a lot of my complacency and worship had, has left from what I experienced Monday night. These angels meant business. They weren't smiling. They weren't there to say hi. They weren't like, hey, Zach, this is so-and-so, and this is who we are. They didn't introduce themselves. They came, and they stood around me in a circle, and they did something. They did something. I had this headache from hell for eight days that was worse than a migraine, and nothing could fix it. Nothing could fix it. And I stood and I worshiped and I felt these angels stand around me. And in a second, they pulled this thing out of my body and it was gone. It was gone. My fever started to break. Everything started to diminish. All my levels, everything went down. It was like in an instant, you guys. In an instant. And I had nothing but a song. I had nothing but worship. I had nothing but worship. And it just reminded me what's available to us as a church. When we show up, to take God serious, He'll take us serious. He'll dispatch, he'll dispatch His angels if we need angels. He'll give us the breakthrough we need. You know, why, why was I sick for eight days? No idea. But all I know is I, I know what I experienced on the eighth day. And I'll take it. I'll take it. I want to read you something. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their journey, they came to a village where a woman welcomed Jesus into her home. Her name was Martha. And she had a sister named Mary. Mary sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. But Martha became exasperated by finishing the numerous household chores in preparation for her guests. So she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all the work by myself? You should tell her to get up and help me. And the Lord answered her, Martha, my beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled? pulled away by all these many distractions. Are they really that important? Let me ask you something today. Is that thing really more important than you fixing your eyes on Jesus and worshiping Him for a moment, for 30 minutes? Are they really that important? Mary has discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She's undistracted. And I won't take this privilege from her. How many of you guys want more of that? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you guys have had to fight for, your, for the attention you're giving to the Lord? How many of you know all the distraction that's out there? The disruption that's out there? The opinions, the arguments, the foolishness. There is so much trying to captivate the believer right now. And you, this morning, have to fight to give your attention back to Jesus. And this is how you fight. You just say... I surrender. I'm here. I'm giving you my focus. I'm worshiping you today. I'm fixing my eyes on you. Let me read you Philippians 3.13 before we worship. I'm telling you, there's a gift. If we can learn to do this, we will be gifted with His presence every time. Philippians 3.13 I wouldn't change a thing about the last two weeks, guys. I wouldn't. Sickest I've ever been in my life. I said to the Lord, I, I, I should be the last person getting this. The fasting, the prayer, the communion, the faith, the, uh, you know, like, this makes no sense. And, and you know, Greg and I were just talking. Greg works in the health field, and he's like, I, you know, who knows? Maybe I have had COVID. I don't know, but I haven't gotten sick. And, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no answer, really. But instead of thinking like that, I just had, I had to just say, Lord, regardless of what it is, I'm going to allow this thing to be all that it needs to be for me to be rejuvenated and stronger as I come out of this. And I'm not going to try to make sense of it. And I remember one night, alone in the room as I was just rolling back and forth, not able to sleep, just in a puddle of water because I couldn't stop sweating. 
the Lord comes to me like almost as if he's not even that concerned about my symptoms and what I'm dealing with. This Jesus just, you know, it's like a peripheral thing. Like, oh yeah, you got COVID, you're sick. Okay, we'll, we'll get through that. Well, you'll be all right. He just, he just comes to me and he says, do you miss me? Do you miss me? I'm like, of course I miss you, Jesus. Of course, don't. And he just says, don't fix your gaze on anything else. Just stay focused on me. Stay focused on me. Stay focused on me. And I feel like the Lord in the church is doing this. He's, he's birthing in us, those of us who are willing and aware a longing for him a longing for him I'll be the first to admit I need more longing for Jesus you guys I need more longing for Jesus do you miss him today I'm telling you if you miss Jesus worship him and you'll meet with him you'll encounter him all the stuff you got going on in your life he it's all peripheral stuff it'll get worked out it'll it'll come together just focus on him make him your your object your prize. Philippians 3.13 says this. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus, I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have this same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to him. So let us all advance together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one focus with one passion I just think it's time to go deeper it's time to renew our focus even more on the Lord if you're distracted today if you're lacking hunger today be real with God about that be real with him about it say Lord I'm feeling this I'm sensing this I don't know how to do this here it is here's my vulnerability here's the reality of my heart that's what the Lord wants he wants the reality of your heart today as we worship we have some space you guys not everybody's here today so you can spread out, you can come to the front, you can go to the back, but take this 30 minutes that we have. Let this worship set captivate you and permeate your heart as you worship Jesus today. And I pray that every soul in this room is encouraged by the Spirit of God. Father, I pray that every child, every youth, every adult meets with you today. This is a special, precious time, Lord. Let nothing, let nothing steal from this moment in any way, Lord. We are yours. I thank you for the faith that's in the room. I thank you for every person that's in the room. Lord, if there's any discouragement or despair or fear or anxiety, God, anything that doesn't belong, I pray that it bows its attention before you today and that we as your children encounter you in a mighty way, Lord. Be glorified in this worship. King Jesus, we fix our eyes on you. We fix our eyes on you, King Jesus. We fix our eyes on you, King Jesus. We bless you today, Lord. Yeah, let the victory of the Lord wash over you. He's always got the upper hand. He's always in control. He's always on the throne. Let his victory wash over you. Let his victory wash over you today. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Sickness is temporary. Weakness is temporary. Wickedness is temporary. The evildoer prospers temporarily. Oh, the Lord has the final overthrow. He has the final breakthrough. He has the final word. He's the author and finisher of your faith. Let nothing else be writing your story or determining your faith other than the author and the finisher. Nothing. Not how you feel, not the news, 
Not the flesh, not the world, nothing. 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 Don't let lack write your story or determine where you're at. Oh, saints of God, do not measure yourself according to the standard of this world. The Lord is alive, He's moving, He's active. Let His victory wash over you today. Oh, His grace, His grace and mercy last for a lifetime. God, we just wash ourselves in your victory. We just shower ourselves in your victory today. Here in this place of worship, this place of vulnerability and intimacy, this is the one news broadcast we need to be tuned into every single day. I know you're moving to and fro throughout the earth, strengthening your people. We are those, we are yours, being strengthened today. God, I pray for every person that's a part of this family that's not here today, that right now in this moment they'd be strengthened, they'd be lifted up, they'd be encouraged, they'd be refreshed by your spirit right there in their homes, Lord. Right there where they're at. Meet them right there where they're at. I declare a corporate anointing and outpouring of the glory of God every time we meet. That would only increase and refresh and strengthen. As we continue to let the glory of the Lord and the victory of the Lord wash over us, we're going to move into communion, celebrating the table of the Lord. If anyone needs healing today, I release the healing virtue of the Lord. I say in Jesus' name, be healed. Be strengthened. May your mortal bodies be strengthened in the name of the Lord. May you prosper spirit, soul, and body and be in good health. Let's take, this, let's take this together today. Father, thank you for your broken body. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jesus, thank you for your broken body. Thank you for your broken body. I thank you that because of your brokenness, any brokenness we experience in our mortal bodies, we can rest knowing you can put us back together again and deliver us from it. Thank you. I thank you for your broken body that is now put back together and reigning from the right hand of the Father. There is no corruption. There is no destruction. There is no more brokenness in you, Jesus. And I thank you that today, by taking of your body, we get to tap into the unbrokenness and the power of your own body. And I pray that every person here today would be strengthened in their physical body, in their mind, in their thoughts, in their heart, in their emotions, that their entire being would be wrapped up and strengthened by the physical presence of the Lord inside of you as, your as the temple of the Lord. Go ahead and receive and partake of the body of the Lord.
Let the Lord renew your youthfulness today. The word of God says that he can quicken our mortal bodies. He can refresh our physical bodies like the strength of the wing of an eagle. Now we're going to pray for the blood of Jesus. There's a reason His grace abounds because sometimes our sin abounds. And we need to ask forgiveness. Guys, I'm telling you, if there's any way we've fixed our eyes on anything else or been too captivated by anything else other than Jesus, we need to ask His forgiveness. If there's any way we've hurt His heart, we need to say, Lord, I'm sorry. You put that thing in front of Him that the Holy Spirit's bringing to your attention right now, and you say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Please forgive me of this. Jesus, I ask your forgiveness for being overwhelmed and concerned with many things point where sometimes I can't sleep and sometimes I can't pray. Forgive me, help me to focus again on you. If there's any way I've grieved your heart, I ask your grace and your mercy on me. Wash me again today. Saints, as we receive the powerful, refreshing blood of Jesus today, I pray we'd be very encouraged by his forgiveness and filled with his spirit to walk confidently without shame, without condemnation. To know that we know that we're sons of God and daughters of God. We get to go out there in a world that's confused and hurting and we get to walk in confidence. We get to stand in Christ and we get to be examples of faith. Guess what? The Lord's going to draw people to your life because of the confidence and the authority you carry as a believer. And so today we receive the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice, Lord. In Jesus' name. Kids, you guys want to come forward? I'm going to pray for you guys. And do you want to come? Where did Iris go? Just a few of us today. Only four of us. Where's that? Did you see Iris? <laughs> yeah. Savannah, will you help me pray for the kids? Yes. Oh, God, I just thank you for these children today, Lord. I thank you for their hearts, Lord. I thank you that they're here, excited to learn, to worship you. I bless their mind, body, and soul today, Lord. And I ask you, God, if any of them are struggling, Lord, if any of them have any confusion or fear, we just come against that right now in your name, Jesus. And we rebuke that fear and that confusion in your name, Lord. And we thank you that they come into alignment with your truth today, God, that they are children of the God Most High. They are who you say they are, Lord. You have counted everything, Lord, for you've numbered the hairs on their precious heads, Lord. You know every detail about them, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I call forth the destiny that you've placed on their lives. 
God, and I just thank you for the book you've already written in heaven about our children, Lord. They will be a God-fearing generation who loves you, who serves you, who never wavers on their faith, Lord. They will stand strong and firm, even if they're different, even if the world looks different, even if other kids say that they're weird. We just come against any um, spoken thing over them, Lord, that is not of your spirit, and we fill them with what you say about them, God. We bless them, Lord. We plead your blood over them. We cover them in the protection, the mighty protection of Jesus. We cover them, Lord, in your love and light, Lord. And I I ask, Lord, that you just fill them with the Holy Spirit today, Lord. Speak to them. I pray for a move and an encounter in our children, Lord. For though we might be small in numbers, Lord, we are mighty. The children are mighty in your strength, Lord. So I thank you that you give them ears to hear ears to hear and to receive all that you have for them today, Lord. May they glean from every word of the lesson they're about to hear today, Lord. I bless the teachers, Lord. I thank you that it is your word being spoken through them, and I thank you that they are humble and discerning to hear what you have to say to these precious ones today, God. I bless them, and I thank you for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Music was playing. Um, God gave me a vision of a window. Bless you guys. Um, I just wanted to make one quick announcement. Is that okay? Okay, so um, I sent out the tithe statements, the year-end giving statements. So if you didn't get one, it's because I don't have your email address and the the slips are at the back table. But if they're not at the back table, then you probably got an email from me. So just check your email. Okay, bless you guys. Love you. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, I want to pray for one another. Just, um, I want to go around the room. If anybody has a specific item they'd like to pray about together, I want to intercede for that. Okay, so if you could just take no more than a minute or so if you have a prayer request and just let us know how we can pray into it right now. Okay? Let's build one another up. Go ahead. Um, just coming up on new things this year, I was really seeking the Lord's exact path. So I just want to be open and discerning what He says so I can feel Okay. So, you got some decisions to make? Decisions to make. Potential new job opportunity. Um, I've entered, um, some of you may know, but I'm in the surrogacy process. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just praying for His blessing that there's a family, you know, just this on. Okay. All right, let's uh, cover you right now, guys. Just join your faith with me. I'll go ahead and pray for Savannah on behalf of us corporately. Father, these opportunities ahead of Savannah, I pray you'd bless her in this season with the gift of discernment and wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus to know exactly what she's supposed to do, how she's supposed to do it. Lord, may she know what she's supposed to say no to, what she's supposed to say yes to. May she not lean on her own understanding, but in all her ways continue to acknowledge you and let you direct her paths. God, I pray that the right doors would be opened and that the right doors would be closed. God, that she would move through this next season extremely isolated by your spirit and directed um, and governed by you very specifically. And that she would have peace that surpasses all understanding about the decisions that she makes. And I pray that she would sense you backing her up in these decisions. So give her wisdom. Speak to her very clearly. And lead her in the path that you have for her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Thanks for letting us know. Keep us posted. Okay? Yeah. Gina. Um, so, I just want to be united with my kids that are in foster care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
That's a good desire. The Lord, the, the Father shares your desire. And you have Jesus interceding on your behalf. And the Spirit of the Lord interceding on that request. Just a matter of time. So Father, we pray, we lift up Gina to you. Her pure desire to be reunited in relationship with her children. God, I pray that you would restore and heal and mend anything that's been broken through sin, through a past. God, you've restored, you've redeemed, you have called her as your own. She belongs to you and you can do things overnight that no man can do. I pray for a mighty miracle in Gina's life to experience divine restoration in her relationships with her children. God, we ask for a mighty manifestation of healing. I pray for each one of her kids that your spirit would move up upon them and into their lives in an amazing way, Lord, that you would get a hold of every soul and that there would be complete healing, divine deliverance, and a restoration tenfold of everything the enemy stole, that it would be brought back and restored tenfold and that anything that's been lost would be restored and the time would be redeemed for Gina and her children and her family. I bless her family. We bless her today and we ask for your grace that it would happen sooner than later and that while she's waiting, she'd be strengthened in her faith and draw closer and closer to you one day at a time and that the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding would guard her heart and her mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, Faith. Pray for my son-in-law, Brian, that um, he's without a job now, and that his whole career has been stolen from him, basically, over this COVID and that. And then I that there's a door open for him, and that the Lord can be him to it, and he will know that it is the Lord. Okay. 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 You said Brian? Brian. Brian, your son-in-law? Your son-in-law, Brian. Okay. Father, we lift up Brian to you right now, God. We ask that what's been closed, what's been stolen from him would be restored by your Spirit and through your name. In Jesus' name, Lord, would you bless him? Would you favor him? Would you pluck him out and just seat him on a lofty place where he could be blessed? Lord, I pray that um, what the enemy has taken would be restored. Open up an amazing door of uh, possibility and prosperity for this man. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Right now, I pray that he'd be encouraged and strengthened in his faith as we pray for him. And God, we pray for a move. We pray for a shift by the power of your spirit that your face would shine upon him and you would blow him away and surprise him with an amazing answer to prayer and a miracle for his life. Provision, Lord. We ask for provision. In Jesus' name, amen. Did everybody on your end who was, we were praying for, there was a lot of sickness and stuff, did everybody heal? Is everybody better? You guys know what I'm talking about? There was an injury, yeah, there was, was... Yeah, Kimberly had her brain injury. Okay. Uh, she is, she's doing better. She's, uh, okay. she's still having some issues. Okay. Um, and then... My brother. Yeah. Yep. Georgia. <coughs> thought we had a recurring blockage in his heart, but ended up not being... Not having, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So those situations have gotten better. Okay, nothing's gotten worse, nothing's the same. There's, okay, thank you. I just want to go back on some of the older prayer requests and just thank God. Thank God for the breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the breakthrough. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you that we can lean on you and rely on you when we pray. Thank you that we have this access. Lord, I don't know how people do it without you, but I just thank you that we're not those people. We don't need to do it without you. We, we humbly rely on you and we love you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yeah, Shante. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in a space 
days from our past keeps coming back and we just and in projection forward. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's pray for that right now. So, Father, we ask that you would give Shantae a beautiful gift of wisdom and discernment on how to wage the warfare with the new weapons that she has as a believer in Christ now. How to deal with old things from her past in a new way, in the Christ way, the Jesus way, the Holy Spirit way, the heavenly way. Lord, give her amazing discernment and wisdom how to speak, how to think, how to act, any strategies, any unique things that you want her to do in obedience to you to bring down strongholds. Lord, speak to her clearly. May she have that knowledge. I pray in Jesus' name that there would be no obstructions, no obstructions to the complete knowledge of God in this season of life for you. That you'd know exactly what he wants you to do on a daily basis. You'd hear his voice. You'd feel his pleasure. You'd feel him backing you up. He's with you. I pray over your situation that it would be blessed, that whatever needs to calm down would be calmed down, that whatever needs to be uprooted would be uprooted, that whatever needs to close would close, whatever needs to open would open. I speak over you in the spirit of Jesus Christ. I speak blessing. I speak unity. I speak healing and restoration in that situation and mighty wisdom and transformation that the angelic realm, the ministers of the spirit would assist you in delivering you from and through this situation and bring great breakthrough and deliverance. Sooner than later, God, I release ministering spirits to move and act and operate in this situation in an amazing way to bring peace, restoration, and healing and victory in the name of Jesus and that Shantae's heart would be strengthened in the midst of it. There would be no panic. There would be no overwhelming frustration. There would be no anxiety, God, but that she would be overwhelmed only by your presence in the midst of this. In Jesus' name, flood that area of her life by your spirit. Amen. Amen. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Bob. Father, thanks for Bob. Thanks for his vulnerability. Thanks for his honesty. I pray that this wrestling match, this struggle to spend time with you in the morning would cease, that it would be very temporary, that he would break through into new territory. Lord, that you'd give him the grace to just wake up in the morning, get his coffee or tea or whatever he is he's drinking, and just say, Lord, help me. I want to be with you. I want to spend time with you. And I pray you see his motive and his ambition and you meet him where he's at and you fortify that time in the mornings with him. Refresh him in the morning. I pray for a new birth, a replenishment of spiritual hunger and desire to want to be with you in the mornings and to, and to be able to sit there with you and be still and just allow you to love on him, to be still enough to receive your love and let you wrap your arms around him. I pray that Bob would know the grace and the mercy that is faithful every morning Every morning, even when he gets it wrong, Lord, the next morning you're faithful. You're ready to meet again and you're not going to go away. You're not going to leave. You're not going to back down. You're not going to stop pursuing this man. So may he surrender to that and yield to your pursuit of him and rest in it. And I just pray for times of refreshing for you, Bob, to wake up with a new hunger and a new focus to go and be with Jesus before you do every, anything else. May the Spirit of the Lord anoint that part of your life. I pray for your children, for your legacy, that there would be salvation in your legacy, that there would be salvation in the children you've left in this world, 
that are existing and functioning under your name, under your heritage, that there would be salvation, that there would be revival in them, that every one of them would come to know the Lord in these last days, and that they would seek him with all of their hearts. I pray for a gift of salvation to fall upon your entire family and for the Spirit of God to move. Ministering spirits and angels, I commission you now to captivate and get a hold of those kids and to make sure they hear the gospel loud and clear and submit to it. That their hearts would bow and bend to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And by the way, you're not the only one who's wrestled for that time in the mornings with the Lord. It's been challenging for me. It's been challenging for Laura. How many else? How many of you guys have been... You know, there's a... Yeah, there, Guys, there's been a spiritual battle going on throughout 2020, and still now stuff's happening. And um, it's the enemy has been trying to get each individual saint plucked off and isolated and struggling in their walk with Jesus. And just recognize it for what it is. Don't feel bad about it. Don't don't get down on yourself. Jesus is, going to, Jesus is going to pursue you and come after you wholeheartedly with more and more vehemence than ever. And the enemy's not going to win. The enemy's not going to win. Sometimes in your prayer closet, you're going to get in there and just say, help for a few minutes. You know, there's, you know, there's been a real spiritual battle going on on every level. Every level. You know? That's me. Yeah. Continue not allow me to that bitterness and hatred. Yeah. I mean, in my heart, in my situation. Yeah. I have pre-trial that's coming right in the 18th. I have quite. So, just, you know, trust Him through it all. Okay. I just want to continue with that. Yep. Yep. Like you said, spiritually, you know, there's times you want to just let hatred. Good. 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 Let me pray for you, Dominic. Father, thank you for Dominic. I pray that his, the health of his soul would be preserved. To not let his heart be infected with anything that's not in your heart not in your thoughts towards Him, Lord. Continue to guard Him and protect Him from bitterness, offense, anger, wrath, malice, rage. Protect Him from the hook of the enemy to try to bait Him and capture Him and ensnare Him, God. I declare the release of Your Spirit of grace that there would be all the more grace for Him, more and more grace to help Him to walk completely free free and empowered by the Spirit of Jesus. I pray, Dominic, you would be refreshed and renewed in your spirit, empowered by the King Himself in the season of life that you're in. That God's will would be done in you, that His plans and His purposes would be accomplished in your life, and that you'd rest and yield in Him and be strengthened by Him in Jesus' name. Amen. Yep. Yep. Well, let's do it right now. Father, we pray for Brittany. And I just pray that the conviction of your goodness would be deeper and stronger than any other conviction in her life. If she's wrestling, Lord, if she's trying to figure it out, Lord, help her to navigate through those questions and know that, Lord, you are faithful. You are with her. You are not to be doubted. You are not, Lord, you are, you are good. You are moving on her behalf. I pray that she would understand and comprehend her daughtership in you. And that God, whatever she's suffering with, the confusion, the pain, the discomfort, God, we speak against it right now in Jesus' name. We command it to be broken. Demon of affliction, we bind you in the name of Jesus. We rebuke you. I command you to leave Brittany's life. Take your hands off of her mind. 
Take your hands off of her head and we release healing. Angels and ministering spirits right now, Father, I pray that she'd be encouraged this morning wherever she's at. May your spirit sweep through her household, her and David and the children. And we pray for healing and we pray for great comfort in your spirit and restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> mm -hmm. You want to use the mic or just... The Lord's just really putting this psalm on my heart. So before we get further into the word, um, this is the Passion Translation, and it's Psalm 25. Not the whole thing, just a little bit. Um, but it says, Forever I will lift up my soul into your presence, Lord. Be there for me, God, for I keep trusting in you. Don't allow my foes to glow over me or the shame of defeat to overtake me. For how could anyone be disgraced when he has entwined his heart with you? But they will all be defeated and ashamed when they harm the innocent. Mm. I just feel really strongly that that's over unborn children. Um, verse 4 goes on, Lord, direct me throughout my journey so I can experience your plans for my life. Reveal the life paths that are pleasing to you. Escort me along the way. Take me by the hand and teach me. For you are the God of my increasing salvation. I have wrapped my heart into yours. Oh, I'm going to stop there. I just thought it was very timely for us today. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Yep. I don't believe any differently. I still believe in the power of communion. I still believe Jesus is my healer all the time. He's my deliverer all the time. I don't need all the answers. Jesus said, Zach, I never promised you all the answers. That wasn't a condition of following me. I just promised that I'd be with you. You don't have it fig all figured out. Not even at the end of your life will you have it all figured out. And you don't have to have it all figured out. You know? Sometimes all you need to know is that you won't die before His time. He knows the number of your days. And as... Yeah, huh? you got to be invited. Yeah. And as sick as I was, I knew I wasn't going to die, even though I felt like it. I'd never been that sick in my life. And you guys, I don't say this stuff for any of, any of you to fear COVID. Many of you guys have probably already had it, and it was very minimal. And it doesn't have to be intense. You know what I'm saying? And no matter what, God is going to see you through everything, you know. And um, I'm not worried about any new strains or, of COVID or anything in the future. I'm not, wor I'm not worried about it. I mean, we, we have this hope in Jesus. We stand upon this rock. No matter what happens in your life, you, He will bring you through it and you're going to be all right. And He knows the number of your days. He knows the plans He's got written for you. It's, you know... You know, it might just be a speed bump or a hiccup or something very temporary. And I knew that, even though I was asking the Lord every day to alleviate me uh, from this and all the symptoms and everything just being full on maxed out on every level, shortness of breath, pain through the body, crazy headaches, just all the stuff, the dizziness, the fatigue, the 104 temperatures and fevers and the uh, sweat and the, le you know, just everything, everything was just full on and at night, I would just curl up on the ground and put on this worship song by Upper Room called Jehovah Rapha. And the guy just sings, Jehovah Rapha, you know, my healer in Hebrew, my healer. And I would just continue to declare, you're my healer, Lord. I don't have to feel it to believe it. I know you're my healer. And however long this thing takes, I know it's going to break. I know I'm going to be healed from it. And, you know, the enemy, the enemy would keep whispering, where's God? 
Where is he, Zach? Look who's in control. Look what's manifesting more than the presence of God. Hell. Where is he? You know, I need to ask me that question every day, and I just say, he's right here, and you're not going to be able to stay here long. Because he has won. He does have dominion. He does have the victory. And uh, I remember that night worshiping, and those angels came, and man, they, it's like they alleviated me in an instant, and it was awesome. It was just so instantaneous. And um, I felt like I just needed to go out back, open the door, and yell <laughs> as a sign that this thing had left, you know? And, and thank God, I mean, the whole time I said, Lord, I know I'm getting hit right now, but I refuse to allow this to come against my wife and the baby in her womb and the kids in the rest of the house. And the whole time, everybody else has been protected in our household and has not had any symptoms, you know? And I've talked to people who had, once they had COVID, it swept through their household, everybody else just consecutively, and I just said, Lord, protect the rest of my family. So we... Even in our darkest days, even when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we, we always have something to give thanks for. And stuff could always be worse. You know what I mean? Stuff could, stuff could always be worse. You know? And uh, I, had this, I had this sermon written two weeks ago. I was going to preach this sermon last Sunday on courage, divine courage, and the bravery of the Lord. And it's like that Monday I just got hit. And I knew I wasn't preaching on courage. I was like, this Sunday's not happening. I just, I'm not even going to try to make it happen. It's going to be what it is, and I'm going to come back stronger. But I'm not going to talk about that today either. I didn't even really meditate on that as much as, you know, this week as I came out of that and still had a little bit of a lingering headache on, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then everything was fully gone. I went and got tested, and sure enough, confirmation, everything's negative. Just so if anybody wanted to come to church but wanted proof just hey is everything clean are you good are you you know I, I provide all that for you guys even though I had a spiritual encounter where I know it was gone not everybody's going to believe that some people want to see the documentation the evidence so I went and got my nasal passages swabbed and got negative yeah huh? no not like Greg's been talking about it no yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, you're used to it now. You're used to it now. Yeah. 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 Twice a week. Yeah. I probably had 50 tests. I have to see my Okay, all right. Go ahead. I don't want anybody doing it to me. Yeah. No way. No. I know, huh? I don't like anybody else doing anything to me. That's why I don't go to the doctors unless I'm forced to, you know. But no way, man. Nothing against medical professionals. I just, I like being the one in charge of my own body. You know what I mean? So I just have a couple things that I feel I'm supposed to say to encourage us during this time. Um, because I myself am in the battle with you guys. I know the spiritual warfare. I know what the enemy's doing. He's trying to get Christians confused, distract, distracted, run down, burned out, so that you just quit. Whatever it is you're supposed to be doing for the Lord, you just quit. You just say, man, I don't know how to run this race anymore. I can't do it. I just don't have the strength for it. And in one sense, the Lord wants you to know you don't have the strength and to just accept in your weakness and yield to Him and say, Lord, I'm going to trust in You. I'm going to go not on my own strength, but I'm going to go on Your strength. And I hear the Lord saying this morning, Rest in Me. Rest in Me. Rest in Me. I hear the Lord saying, Enjoy Me and let Me enjoy You. Don't get so uptight. Don't get so worked up. Don't get so stressed out about whatever it is that you haven't enjoyed Jesus anymore. Okay, make sure you're still enjoying Jesus and letting Him enjoy you. How do you do that? Well, you fight to fix your eyes on Him and you give Him your attention. That's just, that's the only way to do it. Fix your eyes on Him. Fix your eyes on Him. Guys, I had my whole prayer routine completely blasted and disrupted for a week and a half. No prayer closet time, no, 
no consistent prayer. You know, you know what I mean? I had, it was all obliterated. My bunker was shot down. And I was out there in the middle of the battlefield getting stepped on. And it's like, what do we have in those moments other than I'm still somehow just looking to you? That's all I have. I don't really have a worship or a song or a prayer. I can't even read the scripture. I couldn't even focus my eyes well enough to read a scripture, to read a line of scripture. So I couldn't even read the Bible. And you know what? I just said, all right, when it all comes down to it, when it all boils down, it's just, you love me. I love you. I know you're with me. I know you're fighting for me. I know the Lord's singing over me. I know the Lord's prophesying over you and he's interceding for you. I mean, when you can't intercede for yourself, the Bible says the Spirit intercedes for you on your behalf with groans and utterings and words that can't be described. And you get to rest in him. You get to rest in him. Faith, go ahead, yeah. Sure. No matter what it took, which he knocked you down, but yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, and just yeah, and kept you yeah. until you were refreshed. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yep. And the Lord had been the Lord had been telling me for a while, real subtly, you need to honor the Sabbath, and I wasn't, you know, and I'd go right into Monday. Go right into Tuesday and just my week would, my weeks were just going. And I would tell the Lord, Sundays are restful for me, Lord. Like, Sundays are restful for me. I wake up, I spend time in prayer, I get in the Word, I get to come and worship with you guys. Like this, this thing, cleaning and brewing coffee and getting stuff ready and lights turned on, it's not this huge task. You know what I mean? How we can rationalize with the Lord sometimes. And I would tell the Lord, Sundays are my Sabbath. And he's like, no. Not really. I, you need to have a day where you lay everything down and you do nothing. And I, you know, hadn't really been listening to him because I don't feel burned out. I don't feel run down. I don't feel used up. I don't, you know, all those things. And, uh, yeah. Huh? I'm, I'm still working that out. So, t t tomorrow... I'll let you know. <laughs> but I'm trying to figure that out. What does it look like to have a Sabbath? All right, maybe that's a Friday. Maybe it's a Monday. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I got whacked, you know, and could barely get into the bathtub. And then once I was in the bathtub, I was like, thank you, Lord. I'm sitting here for like an hour. You know, I can't even move. And, you know, even in your worst times, there's good stuff that comes out of it. And I, and I do thank the Lord for the rest and, you know, everything got shut down. My communication, my phone, work, everything, and good stuff comes out of it. Good stuff comes out of it, you know? So I felt bad, though, about not having church because families and kids want to... Nobody else has the right to miss out on church because one person's suffering, you know what I mean? But in the future, if anything like that were to happen, we're going to have something set up to where a Sunday wouldn't be missed. Somebody, a team, would be leading. Um, but the fact is, it was in our house. We couldn't have church in our house because I was sick and I was all over this place with sickness. So you can't really have church in a house where there's coronavirus and, you know, it, I didn't have this building that I could be totally separate from. You know what I mean? So, no. No, I wouldn't have. Wouldn't have. Yeah. 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 And hopefully you, yeah, and hopefully you guys enjoyed that Sunday with your families and, you know, had some nice time. Um, but I just want to read a couple things out of Psalm 139 in the Passion Translation. Just a couple, a few observations. <clears throat> Got about five more minutes, so I'm going to go quickly. Verse 1, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. How restful is that sometimes to know that the Lord knows you? Let yourself be strengthened by the fact that the Lord knows you. And sometimes when you go get in His presence, you don't have to talk. You don't have to get everything off your chest and out of your heart because He already knows. 
He already knows what you're going through. He knows the thoughts you have about your children. He knows the concerns you're carrying. Okay, He knows. He knows you. And sometimes it's okay to just rest in Him knowing you. You are so intimately aware of me. You read my heart like an open book and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I'll take before my journey begins. I love this. Verse 5. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. And this, the knowledge of all the above, is just too wonderful and deep and incomprehensible for me. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. You see that? The Lord knowing you ought to bring you strength. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you're there too. I love that. Even if you experience the depths of hell, he's still there. There's nothing you can, there's nothing you can go through that he already hasn't been through. If I fly with the wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It is impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me. For your presence is everywhere. Bringing light into my life, there is no such thing as darkness with you. The night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside. I love that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by the Lord. Your body is fearfully and wonderfully made by the Lord. Under the direction of the Holy Spirit, your body knows how to take care of itself. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. You know, even in the midst of having that sickness, I was amazed at the body's ability to fight something foreign that it had never seen before in its immune system. The body's ability to, to catch up and say, all right, what's going on here? We're working through this. We're fighting something. We're waging war. And to, and to outlast whatever that thing was. You know what I mean? It's amazing how complex the body is. A couple observations from those verses. Just a couple things. It's, a, it's foolish and a waste of time to pretend with God. He already knows you. If you want to get anywhere with Him, you must be real and vulnerable. Just be real and vulnerable with Him. Verse 5, He's prepared a future for you. Verse 7 through 10, we see there's nothing we can go through that God is not there also. We are never abandoned. It's important to realize that no matter what goes on or how you feel or what you're dealing with, you are not alone, you are not abandoned. God is with you. God is with you. I was going to read John 14 and some verses out of there in John 15, but I'll save that. Basically, John 14 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in me. Trust in God. Abide in me. You will have all that you need by abiding in me. How do you abide in me? By loving me and obeying my commands. If you guys want to stay close to the Lord in this season, just love Him. Just love Him. Let your love for Him go deeper. Be all the more rooted in Him and strengthened by His love for you. The, he says in John 15, let my love for you continually nourish your hearts. <clears throat> How much more so in this season do we need to allow the love of Jesus to nourish our hearts and be strengthened by Him? It's good to be with you guys today. I hope, I hope we're refreshed and strengthened by Him today in our time of worship. It's good to be with Him. Greg, Greg's preaching next week. So come. It's good to be with you guys. You know, it's, it's an honor. I, I knew on Monday, I prayed and said, Lord, can we have church? And He said, absolutely. Absolutely, you're good to go. Your household's good to go. And, you know, I didn't want to miss another week. I didn't want to miss another week. And I thought on Monday, earlier on Monday, we were going to be missing another week. I was going to have this thing for another, the full 14 days or whatever it is. Things going on. Nope. Monday night, eight, day eight, done. We're having church. We're getting back together. It's awesome to be with you guys. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the prayers. We're, here, we're definitely here for each other, aren't we?
Even though we're not together sometimes, I know what's going on on the other end of your guys' lives. I know you guys are doing your best to seek the Lord. I know we're praying for each other. Something goes out on WhatsApp. I know at least one or two or three people are praying for that thing, for that breakthrough. So. How's Lisa? Is Lisa doing okay? I heard she might. Yes. No, I heard she's better. I heard nothing's got worse. She's better. Ken texted this morning and said they're doing better. There's a couple sore throats, and that's why I didn't come today. And they're doing better. So nothing's gotten worse. Yep. My, my neighbor, uh, Diane, who went to the hospital, she's doing better. She, she had something with her uh, stomach, and they had to operate her, and she's home. Good. Good. I'm telling you, wick wickedness only prevails real temporarily. It's, in, it's very important not to see with our natural eyes. That's why the Lord told me very clearly, stay, stay very far away from the news right now for your sake. Because you can't base any decisions off of what you're seeing right now. And so for me, I, in order to obey the Lord, I'm staying in a place of faith and I'm not going to certain outlets because He's told me not to. can't tell you guys to do that, but He's told me not to because I'm seen with faith. I'm seen with faith. Can't go off what you see right now. The Lord's always doing cool stuff. So let's stand and pray together. Be encouraged today, guys. Father, thank you for this time of rest in your presence. Thank you for this time of corporate prayer where we get in, we've gotten to intercede for one another. I pray that every heart would be strengthened today. We love you, Jesus. We show up this week to make another declaration that we're going to fix our eyes on you for another week to come. We're going to focus on you. We're going to fix our eyes on you. God, we're not going to be swayed by evil. We're not going to be overcome. We are going to fix our eyes on you. Our faith is going to be strengthened. We're going to go even deeper with you. Unbelief is being eradicated from our lives. We're walking in the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And we believe this is a place where you are going to continue to pour out your glory in ever increasing measure. And I speak a blessing over every person here that this week they'd be strengthened to walk in the Spirit, exclusively in love with you, captivated by you, every moment of every day this upcoming week. We bless you and we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen.